Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart for today. Over the last couple of weeks, we had a consolidation period, but after we broke out to the downside, this was actually a very scary time in the market. However, right now in the short term, we have traded back inside this descending channel. And one other thing you might notice here, if I zoom out a little bit, is that we actually had a test of the bull market support band. And whenever you zoom out to the longer time frames, you can see that every couple months, in a bull market, the price has to get a touch of this bull market support band in order to confirm that the bull market is still on. So in this case, we got a first little touch, a wick down to the bull market support band. And potentially this could already be enough for us to blast back to the upside or at least back to the top of this range. However, as of right now, we haven't had a daily candle close back in this range again. And another important thing to note here on the daily time frame is actually the RSI momentum indicator. Because ever since Bitcoin started consolidating after we got the top at 73K, you can see that we have this descending line of resistance where we have just been steadily been getting rejected from that trend line. And right now in the short term, you can see that we are about to test that downward sloping trend line again. And like I have been saying over my last couple of videos, as soon as we see a trend line break, so we break above the trend line, potentially get a retest and then blast off to the upside. This will be a clear confirmation for us that the trend is actually reversing. So in the very least, it will be a confirmation that we would be breaking this bearish trend because when we get above that price, likely the RSI will also break above this trend line. However, it could also signify a larger trend where the Bitcoin price is ready for that next leg to the upside again at least to the top of this range, but potentially even break out above it and just blast off entirely back into price discovery. So these are very exciting times in the market. Now let's take a look at some short term support and resistance levels that you need to keep an eye on to get a better understanding of what you can expect for Bitcoin in the short term. So first of all, let's take a look at the Fibonacci levels of support, because as you can see right here, we did not manage to clear above the one Fibonacci level. So when we started trading back to the downside, we have now actually held support in the short term at the 0.786 Fibonacci level, which is sitting roughly at 57.6K. So for now, the Fibonacci level has been held as a level of support and the next Fibonacci level as a level of resistance above it is at the all-time high, roughly at 69.2K. Now zooming in on the short term support and resistance levels on the four hour time frame. First of all, you can see that we held this level of support perfectly and the level of support is from about 56.5K all the way up to 58,000 US dollars. And when we started trading to the upside, well, we are currently now in another level of resistance. And this level of resistance is from about 60K all the way up to 62.4K. So in the case that we break through that level of resistance, well, the next big level of resistance is going to be from 65K all the way up to 66,000 US dollars for the price of Bitcoin. And another important thing to note here in the short term is that recently the RSI was in oversold territories. And typically when that happens, it means that the Bitcoin price has limited room to the downside. And this also coincided perfectly with this level of support. So therefore a bounce was very likely. And right now you can see that we are trading above the 50 level for the RSI momentum indicator, which indicates that we are now in an uptrend on the four hour time frame. So the thing to look out for here is whenever the RSI on the four hour time frame reaches into overbought territories, and this is when the RSI reaches a level above 70, because whenever that happens, it means that there is a limited room to the upside for the price to go higher in the short term. So in the case that we reach that RSI overbought territory, likely you will see some choppy sideways price action for a little bit, or potentially even some bearish price action. But again, in the case that we break above this current level of resistance, well, it would then flip it into a level of support. So potentially it could just be a small move to the downside, falling right into that new level of support and then getting a bounce from there. Now taking a look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map on the one week time frame, And this is a very relevant chart to take a look at because typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there is most liquidity on this chart. So where you see the most yellow areas on this chart. And as you can see right now on the one week time frame, there's liquidity to the downside below 57K actually. And there's also a lot of liquidity to the upside 
above 61.8K. And right now in the short term, we have actually taken out this level of liquidity at 61.8K, meaning that a lot of people that were shorting the Bitcoin price just got liquidated at 61.8K. And in total, all of this added up to about $650 million worth of shorts that got liquidated. So the next big bucket of liquidity that the price might get attracted to is all the way up here at about 64.8K. So since there is a lot of liquidity to the upside and to the downside on the one week time frame, let's zoom out a little bit. In this case, to the one month time frame for the Bitcoin liquidation heat map. And right here, you can see that clearly most of the liquidity is in fact to the upside with again, a lot of liquidity at 67.4K, roughly speaking. And even above that, there is also a lot of liquidity at 71.9K for the Bitcoin price. And like I have been saying throughout this entire move to the downside, I do think that at some point we are going to take out those two levels of liquidity because in my opinion, we are still clearly in a bull market. Though before I move on to the Bitcoin ETF news for today, I do want to say that I don't think we are fully out of the woods yet. Like potentially we could still sweep this liquidity to the downside. And I will keep that opinion until we have at the very least reversed this downtrend on the RSI. But even better would be if we actually break above the all time high, because then at that point we are just in price discovery and it is very clear that we are likely going higher. But until that happens, we are still just consolidating and even in a little bit of a downtrend. So that is just something to keep in mind. Now, moving on to the Bitcoin ETF flow table for today. As you can see, yesterday we got a $34 million net outflow with, in fact, all of the selling pressure coming from the Grayscale Bitcoin ETF, which sold about $55 million worth of Bitcoin on Thursday. So Grayscale is continuing this trend of selling tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars every single weekday. And if they just keep up this trend, eventually Grayscale is going to run out of Bitcoin, which in my opinion will be a very bullish signal for Bitcoin because obviously all of this downwards pressure on the Bitcoin price of tens and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin being sold every day, that will stop as soon as they run out of Bitcoin. So when that happens, we can expect that the Bitcoin price will likely be sent higher. However, we can't get ahead of ourselves here because at the same time, we see that there are also very small inflows from the other Bitcoin ETFs. So of course, less selling pressure is great. However, at the same time, we also need buying pressure from the ETFs if you really want to see the price being pushed up much higher. Though one thing that is funny to note, as I tweeted out yesterday, is that the highest net inflow days for the ETFs was actually at 73K at the local top. And the biggest outflow day of about $560 million was exactly at 56 to 58K for the price of Bitcoin. So this really proves that the Bitcoin ETF traders are not the smart money from what I can see because we got the most inflows on the highest point in the Bitcoin price so far. And now during this correction, they sold at a local bottom for the Bitcoin price. That was actually where you saw the most outflows from these Bitcoin ETFs. But the reason I do want to keep looking at the ETFs for now is simply because there is a lot of volume coming from them every single weekday. And therefore, if we can spot a trend in these outflows and inflows, it can help us determine what we can expect next for the Bitcoin price. Now, taking a look at Ethereum on the weekly time frame, you can see that right here we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level at about $4,000 and then quickly traded to the downside where we also lost support at the 0.618 Fibonacci level. And zooming in on the daily time frame here, you can see that we pushed all the way down to the 0.5 Fibonacci level at about 2870 and then started ranging in between the two Fib levels. So recently we got another rejection from the 0.618 Fibonacci level going all the way back down to the 0.5 Fibonacci level. And now we have found some support there again in the short term and are trading back to the upside. So now if we want to get a better understanding of what we can expect next for Ethereum, let's take a look at the short term support and resistance levels for ETH. So right now what we can see for Ethereum on the one hour time frame is actually this ascending triangle pattern, which has already broken out to the upside with the breakout point being roughly $3,014. And the confirmed price target for this breakout is actually 3180 for the price of Ethereum. 
The one thing you must keep in mind, for example, in the case that Bitcoin gets a larger pullback now, well, the point of invalidation where we have to cross off this price target, meaning it is no longer active, is actually if you see the price of Ethereum trade below the point of the breakout, so again, below about $3,014. Either way, let's now take a look at the support and resistance. So first of all, we have this level of support below us, which is a big level of support from about $3,000 for the price of ETH all the way down to $2,850. However, in the case that we do just continue to trade higher, well, the next level of resistance for the price of Ethereum is from about $3,150 up to 3250 and these are just some levels to keep in mind one other thing regarding the rsi is that on the one hour time frame the rsi is already pretty close to being in overbought territories so this is definitely something to watch in the case that you're looking to get a long trade in however on the four hour time frame you can see that we are still not even close to being in overbought territories because we are still hovering around this 50 level right here so the way to interpret that is simply that on the one hour time frame perhaps a little bit of consolidation needs to happen before getting a next bigger leg to the upside to reach potentially that price target however on the four hour time frame you can see that we are now above the 50 level meaning that we are clearly in an uptrend and that there is still a lot of room to the upside because we don't reach overbought territories until we reach a level of 70 on the RSI momentum indicator. Now taking a look at Solana on the daily time frame. Recently, just like Ethereum, we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level where we traded to the downside and lost support at the 0.618 Fibonacci level. However, eventually after getting some choppy price action and even some pretty scary pullbacks here, we held the 0.5 Fibonacci level as a level of support. So potentially now, especially if Bitcoin continues to trade to the upside, likely the price of Solana is also ready to trade to the upside again with the next Fibonacci resistance level being the 0.618 at about $163. So zooming in on the four hour time frame for Solana, recently this downward sloping trend line has been an important level of support as well as an important level of resistance because whenever we are trading below this trend line it acts as a level of resistance and as you can see right here whenever we're trading above it it acts as a level of support and since yesterday's video what we have actually seen is that we have traded back above the trend line which is a very good thing to see and even though we were trading below this level of support so it flipped it into resistance. Now, actually the price is trading back above this green box right here. So it has now flipped that resistance back into support. And this level of support is sitting from about $125 all the way up to $133 for the price of Solana. And besides that, we are also getting some price action in this current level of resistance, which is sitting from about $140 all the way up to $150. So in the case that you do see the price break above that level, we might get some short-term resistance at about $160, but the next big level of resistance for Solana is actually above that at about $166 all the way up to $171 for the price of Sol. Now, if you are interested in watching my analysis on the higher time frame, so long-term analysis, as well as taking a look at some on-chain metrics where I'm diving deep into what is actually happening on the blockchain in order to make price predictions and have a better understanding of the trend of the current market, if that is something you're interested in, I just uploaded a 28-minute deep dive analysis video where I'm talking about exactly all of those things, taking a look at some indicators and things that I usually don't look at in my regular YouTube videos. So I highly recommend you go check it out. You can find the video on my Patreon, which you can find the link to in the description of the video that you are watching right now. There's two things you can do on my Patreon. First of all, if you just join for free, you get access to my free trading course. Currently, there's one video in there, but I will be uploading more videos over time whenever I find the time to actually record and edit those videos. And the second thing you can do is actually join my Patreon membership, which is only $5 a month, and you get access to my long-term analysis videos, as well as some extra benefits like priority reply in the comments or where you can just ask me questions directly. And besides that, you also get access to an exclusive role in my Discord server. But in my opinion, the main thing is actually getting access to these analysis videos so like i said if that's something you're interested in go check it out and if not this has been today's update video thank you very much for watching once again and i will see you tomorrow in the next one